Hello, this is Manash Patel from the EII Capital Group. Today is January 23, 2012. This is a weekly Ichimoku analysis for the futures market where we cover everything from natural gas to oil uh, to metals to commodity futures and so forth. This is our normal disclaimer to state this is for education use only. All charts that you're going to see are from Thinkorswim, from TD Ameritrade, TradeStation, or FreeStockCharts.com from Warden Brothers. Here are my contact details here at PatelaEIICapital.com. You could access any of our free resources here at IchimukuTrade.com. Um, we could access Facebook, Twitter, uh, our free videos, our market outlook videos, uh, videos on Ichimoku and so forth there. Okay, and also you could access our heat map that we're going to be using uh, also there. Okay, now first thing first, before we move forward, uh, we're going to actually go check our, we have this email module that releases that gives people uh, the uh, two time frame buy and sell scenarios. Uh, and if you look here at our futures table, you could see basically, remember, let me shrink this down a little. Uh, the left hand side is basically the bullish column, right hand side is the bearish column. And remember, each, uh, each, each component, each row represents two time frames. So if you look at heating oil, this is a two time frame buy for heating oil. If it breaks the next resistance level, and the same thing for two year treasury notes. On the bearish side, you basically got soybean oil, uh, corn, and wheat. And we'll look at those in just a minute and we'll highlight them when we get there. Uh, but remember, these are opportunities with two time frame buyers or sell, but they have to make, break the last support resistance. Okay. Um, and if you look midterm, you got over here too. So you could see heating oil is actually uh, slow uh, on the 30 minute, 120, and daily. So this is a multiple time frame buy uh, where the lower time frames are in sync with the higher two. So definitely going to look at the heating oil component and look at that and see if there's an opportunity for a trend there. Okay, so let's go to our charts. Remember, on the left hand side is the daily time frame, on the right hand side is the weekly time frame. So let's go through starting from the very beginning and let's start going for all the futures so if you look at cocoa futures really nothing going on bearish trending here it's on a verge of a medium pullback uh, nothing really going on as far as daily is concerned it's in the cloud crude oil uh, as you can see it's just topping out over here on the daily time frame where it's just consolidating here a lot of people looking at this as double tops double head and shoulder patterns and so forth and thinking this thing's going to go down weekly time frame nothing really going on at all the sediment is bullish but really not doing anything at all it's got a breakthrough about one uh, 103 in order to start a trend to the top side and if it does it has a potential going up to 115 but nothing as far as right now cotton you could see it's coming out of the cloud bullish now uh, really it's at a major resistance level right now uh, so it's going to be interesting to see exactly what happens here it could be a fake cloud breakout support level is going to be at 91.91 okay US dollar index really if you look at it it was trending upwards here as a daily time frame uh, you could see that big push went up it's now doing a pullback uh, which is dire needs for a pullback and if you look at it here on the weekly it's showing you that it's doing a pullback too support level on this thing believe it or not is 77 78 um, and resistance level of course is going to be the high at 82 going down we're going to bring them back to gold let's go look at feeder cattle Feeder cattle still going up, 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 up. Uh, started trend on both the daily and weekly, so there's nothing really to talk about that. Remember, that's been the one that's strongest out of all the meat ones. Uh, lean hogs really not doing anything, just hanging around the cloud on the weekly time frame, consolidating here. Uh, daily, weekly, nothing going on at all. It looked like it maybe had had a chance here to break down. Never did break down for the support, so that opportunity kind of just walked away as we talked about it last week. That was an opportunity. Uh, copper, as you can see, this big push movement up. However, uh, it's at a major resistance level right now. Uh, support level is going to be 2.6523 and then 2.5333. Uh, but it is at a major resistance level right now. Uh, heating oil, this was one on lower time frames and everything. You could see that this is an opportunity waiting to happen. It's got to sit there and break this resistance level here and then this one here. But if it does, this thing can start a trend nicely. Uh, but the opportunities are there, but it's got to break the resistance level, which is the first one's going to be here. So this is what we're going to mark down as 31. 
uh, sorry, uh, 3.1394. If it, until it breaks that, um, it's not a really a trend at all. Support level is going to be 2.9568. So if it breaks that, then the trend opportunity to go bullish is pretty much over. Coffee, if you could look at it here. Um, it's big movement up. This is finally starting to move down. I'll definitely keep a look out on this one because if it could sit there and break this pivot here at 213, this thing's going to go start going skyrocketing down majorly. So this is going to be a huge, huge movement going forward. So definitely keep an eye on coffee moving forward. Lumber, lumber is really doing nothing at all. So just moving on there. Live cattle. This is not like the feeder cattle, which had a huge move up. Um, so this is kind of just hanging around here at the resistance level here at 125.47, really not doing anything at all. Support level is going to be 121.81. Let's keep on scrolling down. Natural gas. Oh, look at this movement. This is a huge movement here. Not only did it sit there and go past this 2009 low a little, but it went a little below that, but now it's coming back up. But that's a huge movement uh, down. I'm not sure if be people be noticing that. A lot of people have been talking about crude oil and stuff like that. But this is the one that's got the major, major uh, uh, movements right now. As you can see, both the daily and weekly are way, way overextended. Today you had a, uh, a 21 cents upward movement, which is 9%, but that's still nothing at all. Um, but it needs a huge, huge movement up um, to sit there and look for any opportunities in that one. Orange juice, you could see orange juice now popping out again. Uh, remember, this was on our radar uh, back here on January 8th. Uh, we actually played it up to about here. And look at it starting to break out again here. So this is definitely one which was a multiple time frame buy opportunity for us on our email. Uh, looking going up and it's continuing to slowly start moving upwards. Um, Pladanium. Uh, it's at the top of its resistance level right now, uh, which is basically right around 690. Support's going to be around 627. Really, nothing going on there. Platinum just poked its head out of its cloud for the first time. Doesn't really matter. Reason why it's going to be limited upside movement. 16, uh, sorry, 1633. Uh, is a major resistance level which is going to run across very soon and uh, support level is going to be 1458 okay let's keep on going gasoline gasoline is at a major resistance level right now supports basically going to be at 2.66 it had a chance last week to pretty much uh, stop and pro down but it hasn't done that at all so gasoline is just consolidating really not bullish or bearish right now so it's going to be interesting to see what, watching this thing for going forward sugar really nothing going on at all uh, it's consolidating so nothing really to talk about there at all gold had a movement up really not doing anything it's just one big consolidation pattern resistance level is going to be 1724 moving forward and support level is going to be 1600 silver if you look at silver, really nothing going on, movement upwards, but really uh, kind of did a double bottom here and slowly going up, but it's going to be a while before it goes back up to its normal uh, 35 and higher. Uh, 35.15 is a major resistance level and 20, 30 is going to be, sorry, 30 is going to be a major support level moving forward. 30-year treasury bonds, really nothing going on here, being bullish movement up, and now it's just pulling back and you can see it's in the clouds, there's nothing really going on there. Corn, corn is really not doing anything at all. Started to break down, but still hasn't. It's just pretty much falling along this cloud right now. So nothing really going on as far as corn is concerned. Five-year Treasury notes, bullish trending as far as the weekly is concerned. Uh, nothing really going on daily. So just walk away from that one. Soybean oil, uh, nothing really going on here at all. This was on the lower time frame uh, opportunities, but not on the uh, higher time frame at all. Soybean meal. Uh, this is starting to pop out here, but really doesn't matter. Reason why 30, 332.90 is going to be a major resistance level, and 301 is going to be a major support level. 10 year treasury notes really consolidating, nothing really going on there. Oats, if you look at oats, it's at a resistance level right now, which is basically right around 300. Uh, support level is going to be at 280. If it breaks 280, this thing does have a potential of tanking even more. Um, Soybean futures, really nothing going on there. 
to your treasury notes. This was an opportunity here. Notice this is stronger with the treasury notes. If you could sit there and break this resistance here at 110 comma 122, this thing is going to sit there and trend to another leg, but we got to wait and see for that to happen. And wheat, there's nothing really going on there. Again, there's not much really going on. You could see that these are opportunities here, uh, but you know they got to break the next support level here. Uh, corn, wheat, and soybean, um, they're okay. They still got to break down. If you can look at wheat here, it's got to break the support level here. If it does, then it could start a trend going downward. And same thing for soybean and corn. Corn was the same thing here, where it's got to break these resistance levels, support, sorry, support levels there in order for that trends to start. Um, but they're not quite there. So we've got to wait for these opportunities to happen. Right now, they look like two time frame buys and sales. But remember, these are opportunities, but you've got to wait for the signals to trigger. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see, you in, see you next week. Thank you.